In this video, I wanted to go over why you don't need to specifically return zero inside of int main in C++. This was a very interesting realization for me. Most of the times that I've ever worked in previous videos, I've always returned zero because at the end of the day, we're in C++, it's an explicit language. We have int main and I figured, well, it's int main. I know you got to return zero. I've done that with C when I was learning systems programming back in college. So got to return zero. But I was looking at some other code recently, like the previous web GPU Wigzor code that I went over. If you scroll all the way down here, you've got int main and there's no return zero. This got me wondering, why would int main not need a return value? So what I decided to do was create a simple little program, int main. I ran this code and it actually ran contrary to what I thought would happen, which is get a compiler error. In order to really understand what's happening, we need to look at the compiler steps. In C++, there are a couple of compiler steps that happen when you compile code. You start with C++ code. Then when you run the compiler, it's going to first create an AST, which is the abstract syntax tree. It's going to convert that into the intermediate representation, which is then going to get converted to assembly, which is then going to get converted into the executable that you can run. Even if you don't write return zero in int main during the step where it gets converted from the AST into the intermediate representation, the return zero gets added. So the first thing I want to do is actually just go through these steps and kind of walk you guys through what each step looks like and where it's getting added in the code. And then we'll go through why it's actually happening. I've went ahead and created a make file. What it's going to do is run C++17, create the AST file, the LLVM intermediate representation, the assembly file, as well as a debuggable main executable. These are the four commands that get run to create those intermediary steps. So I've went ahead and done that already so that we can just get straight to looking at what the AST looks like. If you look at the raw AST, it's not really easily understandable. So I've just went ahead and asked ChatGPT to make it prettier. This still is a little bit difficult to understand, but there's a function called main, which returns an integer and it has this uh, integer literal one, two, three. So if we go back to our main function, here you've got our int main, we've got a equals one, two, three. That seems pretty reasonable. Until this point, the AST is exactly what we expect, but the main difference happens in the intermediary stage. This is what that looks like. So this is the intermediate representation before it gets converted to assembly. And here you could see an interesting line right over here. In the AST, we didn't have anything related to returning zero. However, in this snippet of uh, intermediary representation, you've got something that looks very interesting. You've got store i32, which is an integer, one, two, three. This kind of seems reasonable. But this is something that we had not seen before. It says return i32 zero. And finally, if we go to the generated assembly, it looks like this here is the interesting line of code. So again, we've got uh, ampersand 123, which is the 123 variable that we're setting, uh, we're setting a equal to. But the interesting line is right here, x o r l. EAX, EAX. So EAX apparently represents the what is going to get returned. And in this case, what we're doing is saying X all the value in EAX. So basically clear it out um, and set it to zero. If you XOR something with itself, it's going to nullify that value. So one XOR with one is zero, zero XOR with zero is also zero. In summary, we've got the AST, which just creates this abstract syntax tree, which does not have the return statement. We've got the intermediate uh, intermediate representation, which does have the return statement. So clearly Clang is doing something here to add this in. And as expected in the assembly, we have this XOR statement, uh, which does EAX, EAX, which essentially puts, I believe, zero into the uh, register that is going to return. Uh, from main. The point here is there are five steps and turns out that the intermediate representation is where 
the zero, the return zero gets added. And of course, we have to answer the question that I had proposed in this uh, video. Why do we have this magic? I don't want, I don't like magic. I hate magic. I want to figure out why it happens. I was asking ChatGPT about this and it turns out there's a little bit of history behind this. So first of all, back in the day, I, I believe in like around the time of C89, which I guess I would only assume released in 1989, uh, many compilers would return zero by default. So places like GCC or MSVC did this because the OS um, expected a return value. Even though int main kind of required a return zero, if people didn't put it in, the compiler would do it for them. If the compiler did not do that, it would be undefined behavior. And this is actually one of the biggest problems that C++ has to this day, which is undefined behavior, because this ends up being a huge security concern. And I believe more than 50% of the biggest bugs on planet Earth are caused by undefined behavior. And this is such an issue that the US government is actually asking companies to use safe languages. So companies, you know, like the people who make military software, healthcare software, all the kind of like infrastructure for America that has been built on C++, they are asking them to, you know, figure out a way to move away from C++ and that is because of undefined behavior. And because not returning zero is undefined behavior, the compiler added it in a long time ago. The, the people who built the compilers were like, yeah, we're gonna add in return zero because we know it's the right thing to do. And it wasn't standardized until C++ 11. So technically you could have a C++ compiler that didn't return zero in int main if you did not add it in, but it was just kind of common convention that the compiler would handle that for you. So all that's to say, you don't need to have a return statement in C++ for int main specifically. I believe you need to have it for every other type of function, but just specifically for int main, it is not required. I hope some people on the internet found that interesting because I found it interesting. I feel like there's a lot of history behind that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.